Hi, I'm Nancy. Thanks for stopping by my channel. A square pillow isn't square. This is the place where you will learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Well, today I am doing something a little bit different. Instead of traditional home deck sewing projects, this is kind of a home deck craft project. I needed to make some hot air balloons for my daughter's nursery. My first grandbaby is on the way. And I really couldn't find anything that I liked available online or any patterns that I thought were great. So I decided to try and figure out how to make my own. So I'm going to show you how I made these balloons. I'm sure there's lots of ways you can improve upon them or use different um, products or items to finish your balloons. But at least you'll see how I did it. We think they turned out great. So let's get to it. So the first thing I had to do is figure out what shape pattern pieces would work. Uh, finally, this is the shape that I found uh, worked the best, and I made them in two sizes. As you can see, I have a smaller balloon and a larger balloon. This pattern piece is shown on a one-inch grid, so you can transfer the shape onto your one-inch grid. Now, I've made a lot of balloons off this pattern, so it's been trimmed down over time a little, but as you can see, it originally finished at about 15 and a half inches long by about five inches at its widest point. Now this makes the smaller of the balloons shown in this room, the red, the orange, and the yellow and blue balloon are the small pattern balloon. And they finish at about 12 inches high, not counting the basket, and with an eight and a half inch diameter and a 27 inch circumference. And I scaled up the pattern to make a larger balloon. This pattern piece finishes at about 21 and a half inches long and about seven inches at its widest point. And it makes the large balloons in this picture, the two big striped multicolor balloons. And they're gonna have about a 17 inch height, um, a diameter of about 13 inches and a circumference of about 41 inches. What you need to do is cut out six pieces of fabric in this shape as well as one circle. And the circle is four inches in diameter. So I made these balloons with lots of different fabrics to get different effects and contrast. Um, if you do use a fabric that has a pattern like this, it looks really nice if you pattern match your pieces, as you can see that I've done here, so that when you sew them together, you get a nice continuous pattern around your balloon. Um, so I'm going to show you doing one in uh, a pattern fabric and then I'm going to also do one in alternating colors. And here I'm going to use blue and yellow and I've just picked blue to make my circle. So the first thing you do is cut out these pieces of fabric I have allowed a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to show you how I sew them together, which is the first step. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is make two halves of the balloon separately. There's six pieces in the balloon, so we're going to put three pieces together on one half and three pieces together on the other half. Um, we're going to be using about a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch from the bottom to where the two quarter inches will meet each other. So you can mark your fabric with a pivot point like so to help you see where that point is going to be. But we're not going to sew all the way to the end, we're just going to sew to that pivot point because there are some kind of stretchy edges and you want your edges to line up really evenly. I'd suggest putting a couple of pins in place. And I'll just start from the top. So I'm just going to put my needle down in that pivot point. Okay, freeze frame. I'm not sure why I keep calling this a pivot point, but really it's just a dot or a circle as you might see on a pattern. And I'm going to do this side. I'm going to do it in yellow to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay. And I would stop and start with a little back tack. Now sew in a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down to the very bottom. So here 
here's our one little seam. Clip your strings. And now we're going to open this up. And we're alternating, so now we're going to put a yellow one on top. Now, fold this seam allowance back out of your way because you don't want to catch it. We're going to line these up. All right, so now we're carefully going to. Where's the oil? This is a disappearing ink pen, so don't worry about that showing. We're going to stop and start right on that quarter inch pivot point. Put my needle down right there. And do this side the same way. So this is what you should have on one half. Just like that. So now we're going to do the other half and on the other half we're going to have instead of yellow blue yellow we're going to have blue yellow blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other half the same way. two halves of our balloon and I keep these seam allowances pressed away from the center on both of these and we're going to pin the so yeah that's pressed flat like that and we're going to press this one away from the middle and we're going to line up the tops and we're going to put a pin right in that pivot point right there and now we're just going to pin all the way down to the bottom And what's different about this now is we're going to go around the entire balloon sewing both halves together in one continuous seam. When you get to the top, just double check that your seam allowances are flat. And we're going to be sewing right over that pivot point. Now when you are putting together a balloon with a pattern like this, the only thing that you just you do differently So you just want to make <clears throat> you just want to make sure that you line up your important uh, pattern matching points. So there's one, and it's going to be on the side as well. So the line between these squares of of design, I'm just going to line those up. I hope you can see that. Put a pin in. You can check, see it's it's right on that line and right on this line. I mean this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's a craft project, but as you can see, you can line these 
points up and it'll just give you a really nice looking finish. So that's the only thing you do differently. When you're working with a pattern you take a little more time to to pin it. See how that lines up. All right, we're going to just do the same thing and put the rest of our balloon together just like we did with the solid color one. So I checked both sides, made sure my seams look good, and now we're going to go to the next step, which is clipping all of our curves. And this is a really important step, so don't skip it. Believe it or not, that is all the machine sewing there is on these balloons. But the next step is to clip all of the curves, and this is really important so that our balloon gets a really nice, soft, round ball shape when it's stuffed. Um, and it's a little tricky. I use really small snips or sharp scissors because this is a really small seam allowance, and you don't want to clip into your stitching. But I pretty much clip all six of these uh, curves from about this point all the way to about this point, all the way around the meaty part of the curve. And it takes a couple minutes, but it's it's really worth it in getting a better a better finish. So I will just clip about every I don't know, it's maybe three quarters of an inch. And go to the next one. Make sure nothing's underneath. I just do that around all six sides. Once your uh, balloon is sewn and you've clipped your corners, the next step is to just do a little running stitch around the bottom to finish the hem. I've turned under about a half an inch and just stitched a quarter, about a quarter of an inch away. I've tried doing this on the sewing machine and honestly because it's such a little hole, it's, you can do it but it's pretty fussy work. Um, and I found it was just as quick for me and less of a battle to just do a little running stitch around the bottom. So we're just going to finish the bottom of the balloon like that. And now we're going to go stuff it. This is actually not quite as easy as you think. The way that these balloons are stuffed makes a huge difference on how they look finished. You have to put way more stuffing in here than you think you might and it's not a real big hole to stuff. So you just have to be patient and stuff and pack and stuff and pack as tightly as you can and then when you think it's packed as tightly as you can, stuff a little bit more in there. So I have a giant bag of polyfill here. It's almost full, two pound bag. Let's see how much of it goes into this balloon. might be like, oh, well, it's starting to get full. We're almost there. Not even halfway there yet. In fact, as soon as it starts getting kind of full like this, this is where I now really start packing it down to the top of the balloon. Oh, tug. Tug's upset because our mail carrier is coming by the house and our mail carrier likes to give him cookies. 
So if he's not outside when the mail truck comes, he gets very distressed because he misses out on his cookie opportunities. All right, so I am packing this like, you can see how tightly I'm packing this. I mean, I still, now I have half the balloons empty again. Keep going. When the balloon starts feeling like it's getting full, you're not done. That's just when you start packing it again. So you see we're starting to get a nice shape at the bottom here, but we still have a long way to go. Think you're full? No, you're not full yet. Pack. Pack. So I don't know if you can see in the light here, see these little puckers? You see little puckers like that? You know that you're not done stuffing yet. And you can see some of these other seams near the top, they're smoother. That means that they're almost, they're almost full enough. Still have a ways to go. But this is really the key in getting the balloons to look really full and round and legit. So don't skip on the don't skimp on this step. Don't short yourself on stuffing. It'll be worth it in the end to do it right. You can even see flat places. You're going to start to get a feel for how much stuffing you need once you are doing it. See these lumps and dents? We don't want that. Really work it in. And when you start pushing your fingers in here, you can even kind of feel soft spots or hollow, hollow spots in there. And you want to fill them up. All right, now I'm starting to get somewhere. I cannot stuff past a certain point now. It's just as packed as it's going to get. But I see a soft spot right there. So I'm going to fill in that soft spot and I'm going to start filling up the rest of the balloon. I think the top of it is packed pretty nicely now. Now we're just going to finish the bottom part. And even here, it's going to, it's going to take more than you think. So as you can see, this bag wasn't completely full of stuffing. This was a two pound bag of polyfill. Um, I had used a little bit of it for my last uh, project, but it was still pretty full and I have used every bit of what was in that bag to stuff this balloon. So that kind of tells you how tightly you need to pack this stuffing. And you want to pack it until it is just below the edge of your seam. Okay, I'd say that is stuffed to where I want it to be. It all feels firm and even. It looks nice and round. And so let's go to the next step. All right, now we are going to put the bottom on our balloon. Um, this step isn't hard, but it just, it does take a minute. We're going to fit this circle down inside the balloon like this. And I try and tuck it between the stuffing and the fabric. And the goal here is to just to get it 
evenly distributed so that you have a nice even amount of that circle coming around the pillow because what we're going to do is we're going to basically be sewing this cover to the edge of our pillow so the fact that that circle is bigger gives us a nice seam allowance so if you find it shifting one way or another just keep keep playing with it see my edge is like right there it doesn't give me enough room I'm just going to pull it over a little bit and you just want to make sure you give yourself enough room to sew it on there and catch the edges. And I take a few minutes to really make sure that this is as flat and even as I can because the bottom of the balloon does show, you know, as you're looking up at it. So this is also the time if you feel like you need more or less stuffing to tweak that. Looks pretty good. And just pin it in place through both layers. You can see this is why that circle was so much bigger. You want to make sure you, you catch it in there. Just keep smoothing it out. The other thing I like to make sure of is that it's fitting in there nicely and this seam allowance here, I want to make sure that that's going to be covered. So if you need more stuffing or you need to adjust your, your bottom circle, now's the time to do it. And now I'm just going to go back with that same running stitch and just sew in and out and sew that bottom on. You can go right over your other stitching if you want or you can use invisible thread if you want. Um, but for now I'm just going to get a piece of yellow thread and sew that on there. Alright, start on the inside and I'm just going to go straight in and just catch both layers. And you don't have to do as many stitches. I'm going to actually skip one of these running stitches here and come out to the next one. So this doesn't have to be super strong because this circle doesn't take any weight. The stuffing's not going to push it out. You're just trying to hold it in place basically. So I'll go in through both layers Make sure I've gone through both layers and I will come out maybe every other running stitch that I did. And don't pull it real tight, you still want this circle to hold itself out nicely. Before you tie it off, just check on the inside, make sure your stitches aren't showing and your seam allowance isn't showing, and then I do my knot way on the inside like this so it's less likely to show. And then push my needle right down inside and out. And this will bury my tail so I don't have a tail sticking out. Pull it a little bit tight, snip it off, and it'll pop inside. All right. Not the most perfect one I've ever done, but you get the idea. 
So now we have our, our balloon that's finished to this point. Next thing we're going to do is work on the way that we're going to suspend this so when you hang it from the ceiling, um, the fabric doesn't rip or tear or get pulled out of shape. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, what we're going to do now is put on something that's going to help us suspend these hot air balloons from the ceiling. So I tried a bunch of different things because if you just suspend it from the middle, it's going to stretch out and form a point and possibly even tear the fabric. So I decided the best thing to do was find a way to distribute the weight. And <clears throat> for me, I have tried to find the easiest and most economical thing that I can find or that I have on hand and I happen to have a package of uh, notebook rings. These are notebook binder rings. You can buy them in any office supply store. Um, they open up like this and snap closed. And for this size balloon I found this particular little product to work really well. Now when I do uh, larger balloons, because I've done some that are quite a bit bigger than this, I actually use a different kind of ring support. And I'm sure you can find something else that works equally as well for you. But as I said, I have these on hand. They're economical. They're strong. And all I do is center it over the top of my balloon, take a nice long piece of double ply thread knotted at the end, and I am simply going to whip stitch all the way around this ring. Now keep in mind, this isn't going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but nobody's going to see the top of the hot air balloon unless you are somehow stuck to your ceiling. So um, it doesn't matter what this looks like, you can't see it. So I just, just hold this centered like this and I just do these double ply whip stitch all the way around the balloon. There you go. And now I will just... As I said, this doesn't have to be beautiful. No one's ever going to see it, but if you want to be neater and more precise, feel free. Tie it off in a nice knot. Put your thread down in. Pull it out. And pull it tight. Snip it off. Alright. Let's go to the next step. So the next step is to put a system in place so it's super easy to attach some uh, clear fishing line or other invisible way of hanging the balloon from a hook in the ceiling. I really like this waxed uh, thread. It's really strong and because it's waxed it doesn't slip or move. I honestly don't know. I've had this. This was my mother's. I've had it forever. But I'm sure something like this is still available or any other strong thread will do. So I'm going to come down the middle of one section and cross the middle of the opposite section like that. I'm going to cross them in half like this and turn 90 degrees. And now I'm going to go along this seam and this seam. Just tuck that under. in there. Basically I'm dividing this ring into quarters. Like that. Pull it nice and tight. Make sure it's in the middle like that. And then I'm going to tuck one end under here. and just tie this in a knot. There. That's not going anywhere. So 
So now all you have to do is get your invisible fishing line and loop it right around here. And now you have a way to suspend your balloon where from the ground you don't really see anything except the fishing line and all of the weight is evenly distributed around this ring and so the balloon isn't going to stretch out or get misshapen or tear. So the top of the balloon is finished. Let's move on to the basket. Okay, so depending on the size of the balloon that I'm making, I've done different things and tried different things for the basket. For this size balloon, I really like these wooden napkin rings. I found these at an online craft store and they just really were the perfect size. And the other reason I like them is they've got just enough weight to them where gravity will help hold this basket down when it's hanging from the balloon. If I've tried other lighter things and the basket just doesn't hang nice and straight, it just doesn't have enough weight on it. So this has just enough weight without being heavy that it, and it looks like a basket. You'll see what I do to it in a minute to make it really look like a basket, but I start with these unfinished napkin rings and you can also find unfinished wooden discs in the craft stores or online, uh, in the craft shops online. And I'll show you how I put these together and turn it into a very realistic looking hot air balloon. The first thing I do is I just get some wood glue and I glue the wooden disc to what is gonna be the bottom of the basket. Just glue it to one end of your napkin ring. Next, I get a brown Sharpie and I start making lines like this along the wide part of the napkin ring. Do that all the way around. And next, I'm gonna do the same thing on the top and bottom parts of the basket. And now I go in all the grooved lines and the edges of the basket with a very heavy Sharpie. I go over it a few times, get it nice and dark. The next thing I do with the Sharpie is I make a bunch of lines across one direction of the basket. And then I turn it 90 degrees and go in the opposite direction. And then I will just continue and I will go in both diagonal directions until the bottom looks like a very nice, strong, woven wicker hot air balloon basket. And the very last thing I do is go around the top and bottom edges with a nice heavy marker to finish off the basket. So I tried all kinds of ways to attach the basket to the balloon and ultimately the way that I like the best involves putting a rubber band around the napkin ring to visually divide it in half. And I drill two little holes um, on opposite sides of the nap napkin ring in the top groove. I just use um, a small drill bit. And as I said, the rubber band helps me visualize where the middle is. And I just drill a small pilot hole to the right of the rubber band on one side and I turn it around and drill a little pilot hole to the, on the right of the rubber band on the opposite side. And this will make them completely opposite from each other, so it will hang nice and straight. All right, we're almost finished with this thing. The last thing I do is take some, um, I mean, twine, rope, whatever you have on hand. I actually had some cord that's used for making necklaces. And you cut a couple of pieces that are the same length and tie them together at the bottom like this with a knot. Um, it is important here that they start the same length and that you tie um, the same kind of knot because you want your basket to hang evenly from these little loops. 
and take a longer piece of string and we're going to put this through the little holes that we drilled. I push one end through into the middle, I push the other end through the same hole and then out the opposite hole like this. And then I'm going to continue with that same end and push it back in through the same hole I just came out of like this. And I'm basically going to just be using these two little loops to attach the little hangers that I just made. I mean, like I said, there's probably a million ways to do this. I tried a bunch of ways. I just thought this looked really cute and worked really well, so this is how I did it. Um, but basically, the um, loop that you've put through your napkin ring is going to hold the hangers in place by the knot that you made. So just put your little hangers on and tighten the piece of string that went through the napkin ring like this and your knot is going to keep the whole little hanger in place and then I pull it really nice and snug and tight and just tie it off in the middle of the basket. Last step! You made it this far, I can't believe it. Okay, as you can see, I decorated this balloon a little bit with some trim, and now we're just going to attach the basket uh, to the balloon. You're just going to, you're going to just decide what two opposite ends of the balloon you want to attach it to, and I simply get a piece of thread that coordinates with the, uh, the little hangers that I made for my basket, and I'm just simply sew it on. I start with my knot on the inside and I will just run my thread through the little loop and just do a couple of stitches. It doesn't take much. This hardly weighs anything at all. Um, but I'll just take a couple of stitches uh, through the little lip there that's on the bottom of the basket and through the little hanger loop and do that on the other side. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> it's done. So to hang these, all I did is I put a little cup hook in the ceiling. Um, I did use a stud finder for the heavy ones, and if I could locate a stud, that's what I did. And if I could not find a stud, I used a little wall anchor like this one that was uh, sized to the same size as my cup hook uh, screw threads. And they went in really quick and easy. They are so cute. When the ceiling fan is on, they actually start spinning around, and I am telling you, they are really awesome. And in case you're wondering, I actually did the uh, painting, the mural on in this room as well, and we're just so pleased with how it all came out. Say, hey, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button so you can follow my channel and see what other videos I'm posting. If you have any questions or if you'd like one custom made for you, I'll be doing that on a limited basis for people. Um, I will make sure that in the description of the video, there's some contact information for you. So thanks so much for watching and good luck making your balloons.